Now, have we got anyone in from around the country? Is there anyone in from the north? Oh, quite a few of you. Oh. I ask you, what's the point in having a north-south divide if you're not going to police it? <laughs> it is a peculiarity of the United Kingdom that people from Liverpool tend to think people from Manchester are a bunch of cunts. <laughs> and vice versa, people from Manchester think people from Liverpool are a bunch of cunts. When will they realise? Sorry, I should, I should apologise, really, because I've used the C word rather a lot so far this evening, and uh, I know a lot of people, especially the ladies, let's be honest, find that a little bit offensive. There is, of course, an alternative to cunt. I don't mean up the arse. <laughs> now, are you all familiar with the phrase, see you next Tuesday? See, you know, it's the polite English way of saying the C word, so as not to cause too much offence. Although, ironically, I can't think of too many situations where you want to call someone a cunt, but you don't offend them. <laughs> sort of what I like about it. I'll have a bit of a sit-down, I think. Oh, you all right? Was this the sort of thing you had in mind? <laughs> no, right, OK, I'm fucked. <laughs> Who's come the furthest? Did anyone come from, like, a long way away, overseas? Canvey or... Canvey Island? <laughs> right, now, I know Canvey Island, so I happen to know that you've not come a long way from your home. You've just brought it with you. Did you come with him? <laughs> no, good. Canvey Island's the furthest anyone came. Well, fuck yeah. <laughs> you were all in the area anyway, were you? What's that? <laughs> Was that Dover? <laughs> well, you were castrated before you got a chance to... <laughs> right. <laughs> were you worried about sounding silly, so you thought, well, I'll put on a ludicrous high-pitched voice? <laughs> That should sort things out, shouldn't it? So you're a sailor, are you? Imagine my surprise at your high-pitched voice. Mm. Bad things come in threes. Good example of that is Atomic Kitten. Every time I think of Atomic Kitten, actually, I'm slightly saddened because I think, well, somewhere, somewhere in the northeast, there's a supermarket, three checkout girls short. I wrote that joke for a thing called Worst Britons, where I had to write jokes about lots of celebrities. It was a programme that we put on Channel 4. I wrote this as well, if it's of any interest to you. <laughs> I went to a car boot sale the other week. I found this old, brown, bent, leathery tool. Turned out to be David Dickinson. <laughs> now, I don't know if anyone's seen any of the other TV shows that I made. I make a show called Distraction at the moment. Has anyone seen that? <laughs> oh, just about everyone. And one person liked it. <laughs> Well, that's good if I can entertain just one man. I'll have been shit. The distractions are quite good. It's, it's Channel 4's replacement to Sex in the City. Just imagine the city is Dundee and the sex is anal. You get the idea. I, I do another show called Your Face or Mine. Has everyone seen that? Yeah. It's, it's quite good fun, I think. It's a fun show. It's as shallow as a tinker's bar. I mean, no offence, I didn't mean that. But, it, you know, it's, it's quite a fun show. It's, it's basically about couples. It's about looks in relationships. Who, who here thinks looks are important in a relationship? Yeah. Oh, quite, quite a few of you being honest this evening. I sort of sit on the fence on that one. Are looks important in a relationship? Well, I mean, you don't look at the fireplace when you're poking the fire, do you? <laughs> but you do when it's sucking you off, so... <laughs> are you two a couple? <laughs> do you mind me asking how on earth that happened? What, was you, what, what were you thinking? You don't know. You do a lot better than that. You're punching way above your weight. Not just a little bit, it's a different league. Well done. Is that money or personality or low self-esteem on her part? Lovely little mix of all three. That's basically the, the show, Your Face or Mine. That's it, that's all we do. We would string that out for half an hour, the magic of television. Although it's quite awkward sometimes because there's quite young couples on the show and, you know, they're 19 or 20 and they're talking about their looks and it can be a bit, bit awkward sometimes. We had an incident on the show where a woman came on with a medical complaint. I'm not sure what the correct medical term is, but she had, well, she had a wonky face. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not the correct medical term, but... She wasn't an unattractive girl either. She was quite good looking, but one half of her face was a lot lower than the other. 
just a bit wonky. What had happened is she'd sent in a videotape to be on the show and recorded it rather coquettishly like that. <laughs> and then she turned up and gone like that and we'd all gone like that. <laughs> and obviously the producer said, well, this is, a, you know, it's quite a serious thing. This is a show about looks and she's got a wonky face. We've got to at least address it for the audience. <laughs> I thought, what am I going to say? What's with a wonky face, love? I didn't say that. I, I said, could you tell me about your face? And luckily she played along. She said, yes, there's a story behind this. When I was 11, I had a skiing accident. I was skiing down the side of a, of a hill and I, I skied into the side of a chalet. And I broke my leg and my arm and my jawbone and my cheekbone and my eye socket and I had to be airlifted to hospital. And I said, at least you got to go in a helicopter. <laughs> Her face fell. <laughs> Sadly, it didn't even up. That would have been... <laughs> rather miraculous. I can't be the only person, I mean, in real life, I do constantly put my foot in it. I can't be the only one that does these kind of things, but I mean, I, I'm, I've learned the hard way that you're not meant to refer to your partner as your current girlfriend. <laughs> it suggests you're looking for an upgrade. And that doesn't seem to keep them on their toes the way you would think it might. Oh no, they don't like it. I've also got a policy now after several unfortunate incidents whereby I would rather see a pregnant woman standing on a bus than a fat girl sitting down crying. <laughs> Come on, we've all made that mistake, haven't we? The worst thing is you know immediately you've made it. When's it due? Hang on, there's nothing due. You just like your food. It's a terrible moment, you just want the earth to open up and swallow her. Obviously, it have to be a fucking big hole. <laughs> now, the other time when I put my foot in it, but sort of deliberately, is when I do charity shows. I do quite a lot of charity shows, and I'm not pretending to be particularly altruistic. I do them because they're really good fun. You get there's loads of comics come and do a show. There's now about 10 of us backstage. We all hang out together. It's like a little social. And what we do is we dare each other. We dare each other to open with the most inappropriate line possible. <laughs> and what happens is I tend to win the bet and not get invited back. <laughs> Which, if you think about it, is a double win, because you don't get paid for those shows. <laughs> I did a gig for the Ashling Foundation. Does anyone know the Ashling Foundation? No. Well, they're quite a small charity based in London. They're, um, they're an Irish charity, and what they do is they take Irish builders and, and navvies that came over in the 1950s and 60s, and uh, these are older guys, they've fallen on hard times, they give them pensions and retirement homes on the west coast of Ireland. And I did a gig for them, I thought it was a great charity. I went out there, I said, it's lovely to be here supporting the Ashling Foundation. I've got a new slogan for you. Fuck off home, the roads are finished. <laughs> Apparently they're famous for their sense of humour. <laughs> oh no, they're fucking not. <laughs> the other, uh, the other uh, charity that I did a gig for uh, last year was um, Stonewall. You know Stonewall, the largest gay charity in Europe? I did a gig for them up in Edinburgh. I went on, I said it's lovely to be here in Edinburgh. I'm not sure about supporting Stonewall. Sure, maybe if we raise enough money, maybe one day we'll be able to find a cure. <laughs> but I'm not sure there's anything wrong with being gay. That was pretty much their reaction. <laughs> Although they were slightly more theatrical. <laughs> I don't want to sound callous or unkind or cruel, but the Children of Courage Awards how much courage does it take to get poorly? <laughs> All I'm saying is, maybe we could just change the name to the Children of Horrible Misfortune. <laughs> that way we could include ugly children as well. <laughs> if anyone's sitting there thinking, I really didn't like that joke, I don't like the subject matter, I didn't think it was very funny. Imagine how it went down at the Great Ormond Street Gala. 